We're continuing on with our discussion of items on the balance sheet, and Chapter 6 is about receivables. One of the major issues with receivables is how to deal with the fact that some of our customers that we offer credit to just won't pay up. If we don't account for this possibility, then we're likely going to overstate the money that is actually due to us. Now remember that the matching principle suggests that we let expenses follow revenues. If we think about the cost of a customer not paying us as an expense, then it makes sense that we try and place this expense, called bad debt expense, in the period in which the receivables arose. Note that this is another example of an adjusting entry that will get performed at the end of an accounting period. One thing to keep in mind is that we use another contra asset account, called the allowance for doubtful accounts, to set aside money for the possibility that people aren't going to pay us. In this exercise, we'll be walking through how to apply the percentage of receivables method to estimate bad debt expense for the current period. In a nutshell, we're going to look at accounts receivable at the end of the year and assume that a certain percentage of those receivables won't get collected. So to do this, we need to know what accounts receivable at the end of the year is. So based on our prior exercises, we know that accounts receivable at the beginning of the year, 2009, was $7,500. If we have credit sales of $400,000 during the year and collections of $307,500 during the year, this implies that the ending accounts receivable balance is $100,000. We're also given an AR aging schedule listing out how old the accounts receivable balances are, along with a guess about how much in each category won't be paid. Applying these percentages is going to help us estimate what percentage of our receivables won't be collected and what we want to target as our ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. So what we can do is take our uh, total of $100,000 in accounts receivable and apply these different collection rates. And so receivables that are current, uh, we assume that they'll be collected at 99%, meaning that only 1% uh, in terms of our estimate uh, won't be collected. If those account for 50% of our receivables, then we're going to have uh, $50,000 in the current group, meaning that of those, we're going to assume that $500 won't be collected. And we can do the same thing and apply our percentages uh, to the overall balance. And so that's going to break out our $100,000, and they each have a separate uncollectible percentage. Uh, receivables that are 31 to 60 days are assumed to be uncollectible at 5%. 61 to 90 days are assumed... Uh, to be collectible, uncollectible at 10%, and anything over 90 days is going to be assumed to be uncollectible at 50%. And this is all in line with the idea that as receivables get older, as people have uh, taken longer to pay, the chances of us getting paid diminish. And so we can just do a little bit of math here, and what this is going to end up doing is allow us to come up with an estimated amount that won't be collected at the end of the year and so you do the math and we come up with an estimate uh, of eighty two hundred and fifty dollars that won't be collected based on our end of the period receivables and so what we want to do is make this our target in the allowance for doubtful accounts and to see how this work what we can do is we can just come up with um, an analysis of our T accounts for these two uh, accounts, accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts. And so what you could do is put in our beginning balance of 7,500. We know that um, we had credit sales of $400,000 and we know that we had cash collections of $307,500. And that's where we got to our ending balance in accounts receivable of $100,000. And that ending balance is going to be what we use to establish our target in the allowance for doubtful accounts. And so we know that our target uh, was set at $8,250. And one other given piece of information is that the allowance for doubtful accounts started with a $5,000 debit balance. Uh, and in some ways, you can think about that as, as being a negative balance. And so the difference between our starting balance in the allowance account and our ending balance, our target, is going to be known as bad debt expense. 
So in this case, our bad debt expense is going to end up being $13,250 because that's what's necessary to get us from our starting balance of negative $5,000 in the allowance account to our targeted ending balance of $8,250. And so the journal entry uh, for this bad debt expense is going to be a debit to bad debt expense for the amount that we calculated, 13000 250 and we're going to credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for that same $13,250 and this is just making sure that we have enough set aside in our allowance account to account for our estimated uncollectibles. Okay. Now suppose that Flanders gets word in 2010 the three of his customers have gone bankrupt and won't be able to pay off their accounts. So he looks to his accounts receivable records and he sees that these customers owe him a total of $7,000. So what entry would be necessary to account for this? Well this is an example of a write-off because we're just going to give up on these accounts. With the write-off we need to pull the balance out of accounts receivable so we're going to actually end up crediting accounts receivable for this amount of $7,000. Plus, now we're going to use up some of the money that we've previously set aside to account for customers who aren't going to pay. So the debit is to the allowance for doubtful accounts for that same $7,000. Now there should, there's two observations that stick out based on this write-off. First, note that there was no income statement consequence. Our income statement consequence was dealt with when we estimated bad debt expense when we were calculating our adjusting entries at the end of 2009. So when we actually write things off, we've already dealt with the income statement consequence by previously estimating bad debt expense. Second observation is that we set aside too much in the allowance account because we had set aside uh, $8,250 based on our estimated uncollectibles. That was our target. But we ended up only needing to write off $7,000 in that account. So what this means is that we're going to have a slightly smaller bad debt expense in 2010 because there's going to be a remaining credit balance of $1,250 in the allowance account following the write-off uh, and, and so bad debt expense is going to be slightly smaller. Uh, in 2010. And so that's it. I don't know. It's a write-off for them. How is it a write-off? They just write it off. <laughs> write it off what? Jerry, all these big companies, they write off everything. You don't even know what a write-off is. <laughs> do you? No, I don't. <laughs> but they do. And they're the ones writing it off. <laughs> I had the last 20 seconds of my life back. <laughs>